Schneider, please. Hello. My name is Isha Schneider. Oh, there's a person called uh, Ned Alfred who's been sending comments on these uh, transmissions. And he asked, they talk more about how I've got Aaron Koenig. And if you're there, wants me to talk about not going with the Seichel, so we'll try to put it together. We were speaking yesterday that there's the lenient way and there's the radical way, the extreme way. Let's put this into the story of Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu, at the age of three, he cares Koenig. But he had a battle until he, he figured it out, right? He says he worshipped the sun, he tried everything. Okay, this has to do with the Torah. We talked about uh, the, the 2,000 years of Torah, that things are not clear. And Rav Amrino was like the first person who claimed, who came to clarity. But he had, he had a battle. Okay, so those are the Shamists that are holding there uh, can accept everybody. Right? Because they understand that and say, well, you're coming from, you're coming from the 2,000 years of Tohu. I was there also, I was also confused. The Baruch Hashem, the Baladira appeared to me, Avraham Avinu says, right? Like Rav Nelson said to Hishbir, Rebbe said, every time you're an Uman, you have to talk to Hishbir. You have to go in and talk to him. Have a shmooze with him. An hour, two hours, he sat and talked to him. Every time. But I said, what does Rebbe want from me? How can I deal with this person? He's such a crisis. I once uh, I said, there's bear. The error is Hashem. I saw Hashem. What are you talking to me? There's no Hashem. I saw Hashem. I've said that Hishbe believed him. Now, why did Rebbe send Rebbe to talk to Hishbe? Somebody just figured out that the big became a best of how many times was Rebbe in Numan and make a calculation. How many hours did he spend with Hishbe? A lot of time. Now, I understand this, because the Rebbe wanted his people to know there's another world. Not to be like the extreme people. No, the extreme people, that we saw a bear, he's a, he's a bear, he's, he's very wild. He's wearing this big uh, kippah that's covering his forehead, and he's wearing the ultra, ultra garment of Yushalayim. Could you imagine Rav Gidadi wearing such a kippah? No, Rav Gidadi would never put on such a kippah. Now, Rav Gidadi is holding by the level of Rav Avinu at the end of his life, when he's 175 years old, when, when there's nothing to talk about, when, when he's so far away from Tzvira. Okay? But, oh, so there we have a difference between the lenient school of Rav Gidadi Allen, which is holding by Rav Avinu by three years old, three years old, where he's arguing it out with Nimrod, and the Rebbe is sending a person to speak to Heshbeer, to know there's another world. Yeah, you're living in your world of Amuna, but there's other people out there who are completely, and, and you have to take them seriously. You have to connect to them. Like the Rebbe, he had this uh, Arab boy that was, he was dealing with when he was next to Israel. It was a real connection. Because a real person cannot make a false connection. This has to do with the Chai Yechida we were talking about yesterday. If the Chai, chai Yechida are functioning properly, everything a person does is real. No game. The Rebbe was really connected to this Arab boy. And the Arab boy wanted a, a, a sword duel with the Rebbe. So the Rebbe had to run away. And Rebbe Nelson had to do with a Christian when he was coming to Israel on a ship. Some Christian captain, he saw that Rebbe Nelson was a special person. He wanted to relate to him. And Rebbe Nelson did relate to him, but he was afraid of him. In other words, the idea is that in the history of wrestling, it's not for nothing. This is all a shkocha process. And, and the Rebbe wanted it to be that certain wrestlers should be able to deal with the people who are completely different and deal with them in a way of absolute connection, even though they're, they're so, so dangerous. And Rabbi Ram Steiner's got this. That's my claim. Rabbi Ram Steiner, who was, uh, I think, uh, a great dancer of Rabbi Nelson, he was in his dreams. The other comedian didn't get it. Because when Rabbi Nelson spoke to Rabbi you should hear me? Yeah, yeah. When Rabbi Nelson spoke to Rabbi of course he didn't have his comedian with him. He didn't want them to hear these things. And of course he told them nothing of what had gone into his ears. But Rabbi Ram Steiner's, who was Mama Shanaenikov of Nelson, he understood. 
He understood, and, uh, 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 and the CIA comes to him without a beard. I don't know if he was even married. And he gave him a smicha. Why did the, uh, why did the Rammsteiners give the CIA a smicha? Because he knew America is so trace, and here's a boy who knows good learning, and comes, Ben Ben from Tamir Rabbeinu, he's going to accomplish a lot of things in America. And we have to build them up. We have to understand the other. If the CIA would have asked the Levisuk to smicha, or the regular Yashami people, they would have left it. They left it. What? You're an American boy. You're working with a short coat and without a hat sometimes. There was no beard. What are you talking about? The Gdali Aaron, the Lansh Kenneth, didn't give smicha. Why did he? He didn't know. He knew he doesn't need smicha. He'll do his thing without smicha. Smicha will just uh, swell his head. The Lansh Kenneth had this seichel to understand how to deal with all different types of people. And he gave this over to the Gdali Aaron. And he did it in his life. This unit, he did it. He connected to people in a real, real way. People know if you're fooling them. People connected to him because he was connected to them. Okay, now let's go to to Rabbi Sherber. Uh, Rabbi Sherber was Israel. such an extreme person, but he had a connection. Rabbi Israel, uh, Israel. Yeah. If you're finishing with Rav Gadalia, let me remind you of something you told me maybe forty years ago about Rav Gadalia. You mentioned that when he walks into the room, everybody, you know, it's 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 uh, electricity in the air. Everybody sits up straight. Everybody, you know, straightens their payas. You said such a line. Forty years ago, could be. I don't remember. I want to tell you that I used to dance always when I was in the shul. How many shabbos did I spend in the shul? I don't know. Somebody will calculate. When I used to live in there, show him. And, uh, and uh, at the end, they danced around seven times. I don't remember it in the and I haven't heard it for so long. Right? First, uh, everybody dances around one dance shabbos. Uh, then they leave, and then the inner crowd. And ten of us, of Reichen, would dance for the seven dances. And Rabbi Gedalia was the only one, the only one who sat there and looked. Why? Because he understood this is the coming generation. This is the elite of the elite. Where are the elite Nishamas of the world? Uh, uh, by, by Reagan? By, uh, where? Here, here, here. And so he's like, Salam Street. They said, let you start a swinger. Oh, and then, now, here's what's happening. Here you have Tene Reichen. This is the coming generation. I really appreciate it. You have Seichel. He put things together. This is the, this thing of, of being open and understanding the reality, not be closed. The others, the others, they just sort of themselves. I, I, I'm, t- I'm giving over the other teachings. The next generation, okay, there'll be a next generation. I really understood what was before and what was coming after. Okay, let's go to Abhishebe. So, he was connected to Shazar very strongly. But the thing is, this is what Rebbe says, the stock of a Seicha Shekol Dover. That even if you're extreme, extreme, extreme fanatical, but you have to see the reality. You have to be extreme in the materials. If you go against the materials, then you become a cult, then you become paranoid. We have, you know the story of Jim Jones and all these people. What happened with, uh, with uh, 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 Al Baranis? I remember him. As a young boy, I remember him dancing with the Sir Bear in the shul. Maybe it was the uh, Cholamoy Pesach. Again, then, again, you throw, who, who do you refer to? The guy you said at the store. Al- ah, uh, right, okay. Al Baranis. Yeah, yeah. He, I, was, he, was, he was with the Sir Bear, he was with Sheik, but then he... And he flipped out. He went to Satmar, and they ended up in Guatemala. He, he died not far away from Jim Jones. How far away is there from where he drowned to where Jim Jones put a boat in his head? He was in Guatemala, and Jim Jones was in Guyana. It, it becomes a cult when you go against the Seichel. You can be extreme, but you have to maintain Seichel. Okay. So now we turn to what you want to talk about, Seichel, and the Rebbe says... That if anything would have been left of the books of Yilam ben it would be a disaster. Because there's no way to answer the books of Yilam ben Now, where does it say that Yilam ben wrote books? Where did Rebbe get this? I don't know. Maybe the Rebbe is the strong emotion. You're talking about the Sat Parab. Rebbe said, my books have to be burned so that, so that person's books won't have an influence. People who take the Torah and, and a metah share it 
במנטס טיימים, או המטאמי, בקדושה ודיניס ישראל, ודמנטס טיימים of שטוס, they're going against the seichel, they're fighting against God, and this is a fanaticism that is tremendously evil. And the, and the Rebbe was holding the stick on both ends, and on the one hand you have to be open and lenient, like Rebbe Dahlia, on the other hand you have to be extreme, you have to be an up the possibility of a neshama to the shayach to this, should go to this, and the neshama to the shayach to this. She go to this, but there's a there's a rule. If you go against the seichel, then you're going against God, because the seichel is from God. The world can go to Mary, remain Rami Rami. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I have more to say. You wanna? You wanna uh, how many, how how long did I speak? You ten and eleven minutes. You can speak uh, three and a three and a half more minutes if you want. Okay. Just let me cover another point. That, uh, which is connected, that we spoke about the what. A person can be a soldier, that's an epish. He can be a, a learner or a davener or a do-gooder. That's the Ruach, right? It's for possibility. Yud Kei Vav Kei. Avraham Yitzhak Yaakov does it. Eish Ruach Mayim All these things, right? The Aye, Shon, Esher, Adam. It's all connected, it's all the same thing. It's what? What are you? If you're an Arya, you say you do chasid, etc., etc. But there's a how. How do you do it? Like we've just been talking in an extreme way. The whole life you've done with Sechel, right? If you, if you cross the line, you become a cult, you become a maniac. Okay, but there's different possibilities, right? There's Revelin Yitzhak's way, there's Revelin's way, there's Revelin's way. It's in their names. Revelin Yitzchak. That's the halacha, the din, the, the, the straight and narrow. And you got iron. Iron is, is hard. It's uh, like it says in this iron of Kalin, that the pshirin by Choy is for everybody, because he's hard shiba hoi, hard is for everybody. And in the Shabbat, he's the extreme bear. Okay. So, so the thing is that, that, uh, that, the, 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 the what? Is the Yudke Vovke, Esglutz Ves Malchus, and the how is the Nebuchadnezzar. So, according to the Shamus, and according to the combination, somebody who is Chesed and Yisod, he does Chesed according to the Halacha. Somebody who is Chesed and Nebuchadnezzar does it with Shumik, etc. It's all combinations, different permutations of, uh, of these six things. But here's the why. Why are you doing it? If you don't get the light, Kaya and the Yechida, which is the Iskashis and Sadiqim, and Vekis and Hashem, then it's a game. The person does it to, to get the honor, to get fame, to get power. Even if he doesn't, even if he's good, I'm not talking about completing, even if he's good, even if he's doing it the right way, according to Nefta Chod Yisrael, according to the Aloha, according to this, all these ways which are Kedusha. But still, it's a game. Only, only, if you get the right life from the Chai Yechida, is it serious? Is it the same Shemai? So therefore, when we speak of the generations, we're speaking of insiders, insiders. That means like the Mahmoud Tulchin, right? He, he was an insider. He spent so much time with Rav Nassim. One Shabbos he was at home. One Shabbos he was Rav Nassim. He left his son. He, his son only saw him from Shabbos to every, <laughs> every other Shabbos. And he traveled with Rav Nassim. Somebody... Somebody who's a bucky, let him make the competition. Um, he, tra- he traveled to Galicia with Rav and he went by himself to Romania, the Prince of the Kutia Lachat, etc., etc. So he was a tremendous insider, Nachman Tush. And he also understood, he was an insider, insider. He understood. Rav Nachman Tush said to Rav Nassim, I, I never saw the Rebbe. So Rav Nassim said, who do you think uh, knows the Rebbe, the guy who took him over the, uh, to cross the Bug River in Vestavia? Somebody better that will call him. I don't know his name. He had to go over in a boat a few minutes to cross from one side to the other side. So the Rebbe crossed over many times, but this better he knew the Rebbe. He didn't know the Rebbe. He wasn't interested. He could ask the Rebbe, you know. But he wasn't interested. But you're interested. You're giving your whole life to the Rebbe. So that's the insider, insider. And only the insider, insider, the Chayra, can give over the Messiahs, be door to door. You have an insider, he spends a lot of time, okay, but he's an outsider. Israel, we're taking the, Israel, we're, 